thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, good morning. I think we are still in morning. Uh, distinguished panelists, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here, especially in this charging young crowd. And I'm glad that universities have taken up the agenda of climate change. So I'm sure that there will be a lot which will be coming up in the upcoming sessions. Uh, but to begin with, I just wanted to bring the attention of climate change issue with relation to humanitarian crisis which we are facing globally. IRC, International Rescue Committee, is working globally over, in over 40 countries, including Pakistan, to tackle the climate crisis. And we have seen many faces, many faces of this climate, climate crisis when it comes to how it has impacted the local communities. Since many um, distinguished researchers, faculty members, academicians are sitting in this hall. I just want to highlight that in the recent past and in last couple of decades, most of us have been convinced for so long that climate change is a development issue, which it is. There's no denial that it is not. It is, and we have a separate um, SDG goal as well, uh, given the SDG framework. And we also know that it has been impacting every aspect of human life, human societies, which includes economy, business, governance, and above all, politics. There are a number of ways to look at this crisis. Today, I will walk you through its humanitarian impact on the most vulnerable segments of the society. We, the humanitarian community, we, the humanitarian practitioners, we have established plenty of evidences that climate change is a foremost global humanitarian challenge which needs urgent attention by the world leaders. Climate change affects the poor and most vulnerable people in the worst possible ways. It is poor who lose livelihoods, and the impact is greater on their lives and livelihoods. Climate change also indicates the unequal relationship between global north and global south, and that is one of the reasons you have been hearing a lot about climate justice recently. Agriculture is in decline. The quality and quantity of food is vanning. Cattle breeding is in danger due to too much heat, lake of water, and grazing of animal postures are dying. The weather conditions have become unpredictable and creating extreme impossible circumstances for farmer com farming communities. The whole ecosystem of their lives and livelihoods is under climate threat. The shrinking natural resources, they are generating conflicts, displacements, and changing the social dynamics of society. I think it is also that most of us have been hearing a lot about climate-related displacements, climate migration. So this is something which is happening on an alarming um, rate globally. Climate change has pushed many into the state of abject poverty. The recent uh, example of Pakistan um, floods in 2022, in which you have also seen the World Bank projection that around uh, additional 9 million people will be uh, compared to the abject poverty because of the direct impact of the floods which were um, associated with the uh, climate change situation. The vulnerabilities are increased and in fact they have crossed humanly imaginable thresholds like how vulnerable one could be in the face of climate change or climate crisis at the moment. The world at the moment is full of climate crisis scenarios. If you see across uh, the globe, you will see extreme droughts, famine, floods, displacements, conflicts, endemics, pandemics, extreme poverty, food insecurity, hunger, malnutrition, wildfires, heat waves, and the list goes on. 
The recent trends have been extremely worrying, both globally and nationally as well, because we have also been hearing a lot that Pakistan is among the top 10 countries which is affected by this um, climate change. We have been witnessing increasing intensity and number of disasters in recent years, especially if you look at the year 22 alone, 2022 alone, this year has witnessed some of the worst climate-related uh, disasters in the history of the world. As I mentioned earlier, the IRC is working globally to tackle this crisis in a number of ways, whether it is related to displacement or conflicts, or uh, extreme weather events, droughts, floods, and everything. We conduct a global study, a flagship study, every year uh, with the name of Emergency Watch List Countries. So the recent study uh, by IRC, which you can find on our website as well, it suggests that the Emergency Watch List Countries for 2023, this study suggests that the rapid climate change will fuel humanitarian crisis around the world in 2023 in the same way as conflicts and economic downturn, because the impact will actually uh, be manifold. So in the top 20 countries, Pakistan is also um, part of that emergency watch list countries list. The study, the subject study, which I have just mentioned, has also revealed that the humanitarian crisis has now touched around 340 million people. It's hard to imagine even how it will look like 340 million people. Across the globe, around the world, versus the 81 million which were recorded last in 2014. So every year this number is increasing. The people who are getting affected by the climate change, so the number is increasing. So this is just number, this is just not the number. These are people, these are the real lives and livelihoods we're talking about. The climate has become the key aspect globally to affect people and create humanitarian conditions. Topping the list of IRC's watch list, for example, is Somalia, Ethiopia, and in our neighboring country, Afghanistan. The first three countries, these are the three countries who are topping the list at the moment since we're talking about the global scenario. So these are the three countries that are topping the list. These three countries which are predicted to face humanitarian crisis next year, these are home to just 13% of the total global population. And these countries represent 81% of global population that is forcibly displaced due to climate-related disasters. 80% of people facing catastrophic level of food insecurity and around 90% of global humanitarian needs. 90% of global humanitarian needs. While these countries only contribute 1.9% of CO2 globally. And we have seen in the case of Pakistan as well, and we have said that Pakistan contributes even less than 1% CO2 in, in, the, in the environment, but we are the one who are in the top list of when it comes to the climate-related vulnerabilities. The devastation caused by climate disaster events in 2022 highlights the gravity of the climate emergency, because we have been using this word climate emergency. The most visible migrants will be those who are forced from their homes by extreme weather events, which are exacerbated by rising global temperatures, such as the extraordinary floods in Pakistan. But there would be many. There would be many who would remain invisible, but suffering. Climate change works like a slow poison. For example, crops returning similar yields, which we have been observing recently, rising seas creeping into the villages, the whole cities are drowning. So this works like a slow poison. In 2022, Pakistan experienced devastating droughts, heat waves, and floods at the same time in, in, in one single year. The assets, lives, lives, livelihoods have been destroyed at massive scale. The floods alone caused 30 billion USD losses to the economy of Pakistan as, as per the recent projections. And as I mentioned earlier, additional 9 uh, million people will be compelled into the abject poverty. In the past, we, what we were witnessing, the gap between floods 
was around 20, 10 to 20 years, but now it is happening almost every year. So this is the scenario, and these are the evidences which we have generated. But I think, as I mentioned, we, we need to act urgently. Not We can look at the global level, like what world leaders are doing, but what we can do at the moment, I mean, I think Madam Vice Chancellor has rightly mentioned it is a lifestyle choices. It, it depends a lot on our lifestyle choices as well. But there's an urgent need to shift from disaster recovery to prevention when it comes to policy move. Uh, Minister Saiba, we are also coming to it. We need to shift our policies from disaster recovery to prevention, resilience, and risk reduction. A shift from post-disaster recovery. We have always been reactive. Our policies and actions, we have always been reactive. But we have to shift it from post-disaster recovery to prevention, resilience and risk reduction needs. We need to invest in this so that we can save lives, livelihoods and money and protect the communities in the face of climate crisis. So I will end here. Thank you very much.